Hey everyone, and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're gonna to take a look at this brand new 2021 and a half Forest River Cedar Creek 360 RL fifth wheel. This is their mid-year model change, so a complete new look. We're gonna take a minute, walk you through the inside of the RV, then we're gonna walk you through the outside, and then we're gonna close it all up, show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we are now up inside the all new Cedar Creek 360 RL fifth wheel here. As you've seen on the floor plan there, this is a triple slide out rear living room fifth wheel. We're going to spin around through the inside here and then we'll head outside, check it out, and then we'll close her all up for you guys. So start here looking at the big slide on the door side. You have a freestanding table with four chairs. There are two traditional chairs that do have some storage built into them. And then there are two folding chairs which are currently stored up in the uh, bed area. The tabletop actually raises up so there's a little bit of storage underneath of there. And then there's also a leaf extension that slides out as well. There's an electric outlet underneath of there on the wall as well. Nice big windows overlooking your campsite area. And those windows have day-night roller shades on them for privacy. In between the two windows there on the wall is some light switches and also USB charger ports. Now you have a theater seat sitting here, which is a powered theater seat, which does have a USB charger built in there. A little bit of storage in the middle and your cup holders there. Now the theater seat is directly across from your TV. And that TV is on a swing arm, so you can kind of maneuver it around a little bit too. But it's kind of nice, you can kick back, recline back, and look straight ahead at the TV. Now the sofa on the back wall there is freestanding, so you can kind of scoot it around if you need to, but that is a hide-a-bed sofa. So that will actually flip out and make into a big bed for the occasional guest you might have. The theater seat, by the way, is also freestanding too, so you could move it around if you needed to. You have the electric fireplace, which is basically a cool fancy space heater, but it is an electric fireplace. Just above that is some storage area there, so you could set in a video game system, Blu-ray player, um, you know, satellite box, whatever you might need to put in there, but you've got some storage there. And just above that is the IRV technology radio, which has the uh, HDMI input, USB charger, uh, Bluetooth connectivity, a whole bunch of stuff, nice little radio there. But it has indoor speakers, and then you also have outdoor speakers as well that it'll control. Now you do have some overhead cabinets above the TV as well for some extra storage. And you also have some big cabinets above the sofa area there that I forgot to mention. So quite a bit of storage there. And while we're panning up here, you can see you have a ceiling fan. And this is a 120 volt ceiling fan, not a 12 volt version. Um, also, there is the returns up here for the air conditioner. This has the nicer Dometic Whisper Quiet air conditioning system. So those are the return air vents for the downstairs air conditioner. So when you're in here trying to conversate or trying to watch TV or whatever, it is quieter than some other brands that are on the market. Now downstairs here, basically it's all vinyl floor on the kitchen slide, on the main subfloor here. The subfloor that we're standing on is a plywood floor, not an OSB board floor. Um, the only place you're going to have carpet is going to be in the flush floor slide of that one right there. And they do that because basically the carpet is flexible and when that floor has to drop down in there, there's little cracks and crevices and stuff. And linoleum over time has, when you're stepping on it and it goes in and out, tends to crack. So it is better for the longevity of the look in the camper to have the carpet versus linoleum that ends up cracking and breaking up over time. Uh, the carpet's real simple and easy to replace if ever needed to be, but it is a stain resistant carpet as well. 
Now the island is pretty nice. They did a little bit larger countertop than what it used to be. So it's actually a little bit wider and a little bit deeper of a countertop. So you've got a pretty good amount of space here. Now on this side, when you're kind of sitting and looking at it, it looks almost a uh, real dark, almost kind of black color. There's an LED light strip there as well. But over here on this side, it has the gray look to it. And you can kind of see there you have four drawers that are full extending ball bearing drawer guides. Then you have some storage over there on the left along with your little flip down sponge holder thing. High rise sprayer faucet. And then you have the 7030 sink with the little strainer plate things that go over top of them now. Back, back up here again, you have the large Insignia oven, really cool oven for an RV. Uh, it's the biggest one currently offered in most of these fifth wheels on the market today. Um, but it has a glass door front, LED light and knobs kind of have little blue lights up above them. They have separate switches to turn those on and off. There's a four burner stove top and each burner is a little bit different BTU. There's more instructions and in the owner's manuals that you'll get. Um, but a uh, really nice big oven for an RV. So for you full timers or extended stayers, that's pretty nice to have that. You do have storage on the left and right of the oven and a drawer on each side as well. Up above, you have the big microwave and you have obviously cabinets all the way around there. So quite a bit of extra storage there too. Now over on this side, you can see you have more storage down below, uh, electric outlet and USB charger ports above the counter area there. So you can plug in some stuff there. Up top again, more storage. Panning on up a little higher, you can see there is a fantastic fan which does have the rain sensor and temperature sensor on it. And that is controlled over there on the wall. There is a control for that. Now here you do have a little bit of storage above the refrigerator and you also have the big residential fridge. So you have an ice maker built in and the freezer and stuff on bottom and in your fridge por portion on top there. Now next to that is a large pantry, which does have some pull out drawers and stuff. You have some shelves in there as well. And there's also an electric outlet inside of there in case you wanted to set something in there, like a coffee pot or something, toaster, whatever. Uh, you can kind of plug something in in there if you needed to. But really, really beautiful new look for the Cedar Creek setup here. There's an electric outlet down there next to the sofa on the wall. Now on the windows, you'll see when we get outside, they're actually the frameless style windows on the exterior sidewall portion. And they do offer a dual pane window also. So if that does interest you, talk with your salesperson about that for you more extended stay customers. Now down below here, you can see on the side of the uh, counter there, there's another electric outlet. And down below on the step area, you have your dustpan vac slash central vac system, along with the propane leak detector and the electric box with the breakers and fuses. Grab handle there to help you get in and out. And we'll pop up a picture of this also. But you have a little coat closet here as you come in and out of the RV. Little shelf area up above. And then in here, you have your solar charge controller. Um, basically the unit comes standard with a solar panel and it is up to 30 amps. So you can actually order it with a couple additional solar panels or add them on aftermarket, depending on what you like. Uh, right here is the new Firefly system. This is a super cool setup. Turn that light off there. Um, but really, really nice system. The guys will kind of go over this when you pick up the RV and stuff, but you go back to the home screen, you have a master light switch to kill, basically just by hitting the one off button, I shut off almost every light in the coach with one button. Now you can do them individually as well, but kind of nice to have that master kill switch kind of thing. 
Uh, water heater on gas button, 12 volt tank heater buttons, water pump button tells you here what's kind of going on with your battery, 13.2 volts currently. Uh, also kind of has my living room air conditioner right here kind of telling me what's going on. And then you can see your temperature or your uh, tank holding, your holding tanks, I can talk here, um, basically of what's kind of going on with how full they are. Now, this is a little bit different. There's not these little 12 volt probe type of things in there where the toilet tissue and stuff gets stuck on them. It has basically a uh, little bit fancier system that kind of bounces some waves off of the water kind of stuff, liquids and stuff. So a little bit fancier, more accurate setup. Individual light controls, interior, exterior, all that type of stuff. HVAC system, this unit was ordered with two airs. So you have two different controls right here and then also your furnace. If you do a third air conditioner on a unit this size, then you would have three. And it goes on back into here, slide controls, exterior awning control. And then also you can go into here and program in light switches if needed, uh, set it from Fahrenheit to Celsius on your things, adjust some of your stuff here, all done in the uh, setting setup. Now, if you order it with a generator, when it comes with the generator feature from the factory or generator prep, and you go in here, you can actually, there'll be another program right here that will allow you to set the generator up to auto start if the temperature gets below a certain, or above a certain temperature if you wanted, or also if the battery gets below a certain voltmeter. So pretty cool little setup on that as well. If that does interest you guys, again, talk with the sales guy about that stuff. Really nice setup. Going on up into the bathroom area here. This is a pretty cool bathroom. I really like this, plenty of room in here. You have cabinet on each side, and you have eight drawers in there as well. You have one sink drain, but two faucets, and it's a pretty long faucet or sink area, whatever you want to call it there. Um, so it does have a decent amount of water flow space there. And then you got a little bit of counter space on each side. Hanging towel rack on each side, along with the traditional mirrors there. Now up top, you do have another turbo exhaust fan here with rain sensor and the uh, temperature control. Air conditioner and heat vents both in here. You can also see back there on the wall, you have little uh, towel hooks or robe hooks. And down below, you've got a porcelain foot flush toilet down here. We'll spin around here, there is your one piece fiberglass shower with the sit down seat here. There's also a skylight up above. You have the sliding glass doors here. And then over here, we'll pop up a picture of this so it's a little easier to see too, but you also have the little pantry, or not pantry, but a little linen area here. And on the door, enter exit door here, you have a sliding pocket door. And you'll also notice the cabinets in here are different color. They're more of a white color, uh, maybe just a tint of gray to it, but it is a little bit more of a white color. On up into the bedroom area here, you got a good sized bedroom, plenty of room to walk around this bedroom area here. Now, while we're looking downward here, you can see there's carpet on the floor here. Now, this is technically an option. Normally standard, it's all vinyl floor up here too, just the same as it is downstairs. Um, but this customer chose to do the carpet in the bedroom. You have an electric outlet on each side of the bed. You have also USB charger ports on each side of the slide out there. Um, little nightstands above the windows there, along with window on each side that do actually open. Little LED accent lighting below your six dressers there, dresser drawers there. 32 inch TV up top. Nice big window overlooking your campsite area. 
And over on the left there is the bedroom wall heater. That's technically an option. You don't have to get that, but that is another electric heater. So you have the fireplace throwing out some heat downstairs standard. You also have your propane furnace standard. And then you have the choice to do the electric wall heater there if you want. Whisper quiet air conditioner up here also. You can kind of see the air conditioner return there. So it's kind of nice to be able to, again, have a little bit of a conversation, watch TV, and just sleep a little more peacefully with those whisper quiet airs. Now the unit has washer dryer prepping, and you might be able to see this here a little bit. We'll pop up a picture, but they go side by side, not stackable. And basically what happens is this section of shelving right here comes out. There's a few screws that hold it in place. You take that out and the washer dryer sit in there side by side. The nice thing on that is it kind of recesses back into the front of the RV a little bit in the cap section so it doesn't take up as much depth. But that also still allows you to have all this hanging bar all the way across. You got almost eight feet of hanging space here. You can see that King Wi-Fi router system back there. And look at all the extra shelving over there. So you got tons of shelving down there, all the way across here. But this is a really nice size closet. And it's a walk-in closet. It's really easy to walk right on in here. And your bedroom door is a swing door also. Again, guys, thank you for checking out the video. We're going to run to the outside, show you around that, and then we're going to come back in here and close everything up. I want to show you what it looks like all closed up, get you an idea of how it functions. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of this brand new Cedar Creek 360 RL. We're gonna start here in the front, kind of work our way around. So up front, you can see complete new graphics package. You have three LED light strips. Again, new graphics set up as far as all the lettering and the colors. I just kind of show you last year's version. That was last year's version over there. So it's kind of a beige color fiberglass versus kind of a lighter gray color fiberglass and change up here. So a whole new look on the outside. Down below, you have a large storage compartment out uh, down there. And then you also have the inverter kind of hidden behind the little removable panel there. Now this one was ordered with the standard Rhino pen box, which is just basically a steel pen box. Now you can opt in for what this customer over here did they did the trail air pen box with the airbag and shock. So depending on how you want to order your RV, you can do either or. Power awning with the built-in LED light strip running down the side there. You have the uh, arms that are tiltable and adjustable for water runoff and stuff. This one was ordered with the four camera security system. So you have a camera on this running light, one on the other side of the running light. There is one above the entry door, and then there's gonna be one on the back also that you'll see when we get back there. Now the Cedar Creek comes standard with the six point automatic hydraulic leveling jack system. So you're gonna have two jacks in the front, two just in front of the axles, and then two behind the axles but it is the hydraulic system, which is a little bit stronger, more faster, and a little bit more reliable. Pet friendly leash latch right there on the side of the RV as well. Behind this door here is your two 30 pound propane tanks with the auto changeover regulator. And just below, you can see a little white tag hanging down there. There is a gas hook up there, so you could do some sort of portable grill if you wanted to. You have the frameless looking windows on the side walls of the coach. Two outdoor speakers. They're probably about six feet off the ground roughly. So you have a decent amount of sound coming at you. 
big, big storage compartment here. You can kind of see the aluminum tube framing there. It's one of the things I really like on the Cedar Creek. It has aluminum floor studs, wall studs, and roof studs, where a lot of brands try to cheapen it up and they'll go with maybe aluminum wall studs, but then they'll throw in some wood in the roof and floor. Cedar Creek spends the extra and does all aluminum studding. You can kind of see back here, you have your central vac, outside TV hookups, a light in there. And then on the side wall, there's actually some instructions about the Firefly, like where some of the wiring and stuff goes. You have the more ride step above step here. And you can kind of see in the picture popping up there, it kind of hovers, it's got its own little shock assist on it. So it's real easy to flip up and down. The step has the Cedar Creek logo engraved into it there. And then you also have a little light back in behind there too. Outside spray port with an electric outlet right there on the sidewall. You have the large folding entry handle here, which basically just kind of helps you get in and out. Next to that is your model number. Again, 360 RL Cedar Creek here. And that right there basically as you're walking around an RV dealer's lot, keep an eye on the campers you like, where the model numbers are, what they are, take a picture of them. And then that way you got something to kind of show and refer back to your salesperson so you can tell them what you liked when you're out browsing around. Up top there, you can see the security camera, which is part of the four security camera system. If you do not do that feature or option, it will still be wired, but it won't have the actual camera. And you got the extra light up there. So you have three lights. You got the LED light strip, you have the porch light above, and then you got a little step light all right here on this side of the coach, right around your awning area. That baggage door, by the way, is held up by magnetic holders, and it has the nicer metal slam lock baggage door on it. You'll see the sticker on the side of the window of the slide there that talks about being uh, equipped with the Wi-Fi, King Wi-Fi Connect, which we showed you when we were inside earlier. The TST tire pressure monitoring system that we talked about earlier, but there's another advertisement sticker there. Again, really nice and important to keep an eye on your tire pressure, guys. Down below, you got dual axle. We'll get to the sizes and stuff when we get to the other side. But you do have the Dexter Never Adjust Brakes, which basically are auto adjusting themselves. And you also have the Easy Flex Dexter Suspension System in the middle. And that basically kind of acts like shocks for an RV. Now, this unit was also ordered with the optional slide toppers. We'll spin around here so you can see this a little bit easier. But up top on the uh, slide out right there, you can kind of see another awning. And basically that rolls straight in and straight out with the RV when you open and close the slide outs. So you don't really have to do anything to it, but just push the button to run the room in and out. And that helps with uh, water, leaves, twigs, debris, anything from landing up on top of there. So it does help a lot. It helps shade the room and stuff too. Those are a nice option, but not everybody likes them because again, keep in mind, they're out all the time and eventually they will kind of wear out and you'll have to replace it at some point. But there's a lot of benefits if you're moving around a lot. And also if you fall camp a lot where leaves and stuff fall in the wintertime, um, that is a nice thing there too, again, just to kind of help keep everything cleaned off. New rear end look of the RV. Again, gray fiberglass. You can kind of see over there a little better, the old beige color. So you got two, you know, last year's version there on the right, this year's version on the uh, left here. Lighting changed up a little bit on your taillights. So you have taillights at the bottom. You also have now taillights in the middle, and then you got your standard running lights at the top. So they did add in those middle tail lights, which are basically brake lights and turn signals as well. You can see the extra camera in the back there. That is the observation camera. So you can see that while you're driving down the road. The ladder on the back of the coach comes down nice and low. So it's a little easier to step up onto the, to kind of start with there. Um, a lot of them don't start till just above that tail light. 
So it's probably about, I'd say close to a foot lower than some of the other ladders on these RVs that we have. Up top, you see the roof area up there. You can see your air conditioners and some of the plumbing stack vents, attic vents, all that type of stuff up there. It's real important. This is again, a full walk on roof. So you can get up there and walk around. Just make sure there's nothing sharp in your shoes so you don't damage something. But you do wanna get up there from time to time, guys, and inspect your seals and seams and stuff. This thing's driving down the road, twisting, torquing, flexing. You know, the sun and weather's trying to beat it up. So you wanna get up there and inspect that stuff from time to time to make sure it doesn't crack open or anything like that and just kind of recalk it as needed. So real important to check on that from time to time. Down below you have your two inch hitch receiver down there. Now that is basically just for uh, like a bike rack or a little luggage rack or something. It is not rated to tow a boat. If you wanted to do some sort of boat or something like that, you would have to do something aftermarket. The factory does not offer that currently. Now on the side of the slide up there, you can also see you have the vent for the stove exhaust up there. Now I wanna kind of zoom underneath it here a little bit. You can kind of see this a little bit. Just underneath of there, that is the ice maker and the drain for the ice maker. So if we always get questions, where's that at? My ice maker's not working when people get campers delivered to them in the winter time, because they're winterized. So that is where that's located. And just in underneath of there is also another drain you can see back under there. Again, guys, don't forget to check out Couches RV Nation. They are one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country, guys. They will definitely save you guys a lot of money. Down below here, you got your dump area. You have your dump hose holder just behind that jack also. Furnace exhaust out here, your 50 amp power cord. You can see it kind of stretched all the way out and back there. It's probably about 25 or 30 feet long, roughly. 12 gallon gas electric water heater. Now you do have an option to get the Truma on demand water heater. If you are interested in an on demand version, talk with your sales guy about that. In here, the other side of the storage compartment, you have your powered power cord reel up there on the left. So you just stick the head piece of the power cord in and roll it up by hitting the button there. You have your docking station over here on the right. So in here, you basically have your two gray tanks and your black tank. They're up here out of the way instead of crawling underneath the coach to get to them. So I like that feature. On off valves for the hydraulic slides. Winterization valves and bypasses here. Outside utility shower, black tank flush. Your fill for your city water or portable water. And there's a little instruction thing over there for your winterization stuff too. Battery disconnect, cable satellite inlets, and the front cap light are all right here in this section. And basically this little black cap, you just unscrew that, feed your water hose up, feed your cable or satellite wire up through there, hook them up, and then you can close your door and basically, you know, kind of keep everything protected and insulated. Slam lock baggage door. And I like how this door swings instead of raising up and down. That's nice because it doesn't interfere with your slide out. Some brands are doing the door that comes up and then you gotta worry about it catching in there if the shocks go up too high or something like that. Right here you have your battery compartment. And this area also has the hydraulic reservoir. This is where you would manually crank this stuff in if it failed. Hopefully it never does, but you also have another override button here and then a battery compartment down below. Some instructions on how to operate the auto level jack system. The auto level jack system controls right here. And down below are some low point water drains. While we're looking down here also, notice that this metal rolls right on down and goes to the frame of the I-beam. This has the drop Z frame, but they actually use the aluminum siding to kind of enclose a lot of that. 
Just gives it a lot nicer, cleaner look, even though it's kind of dirty right now. It hasn't been washed yet, but it does kind of finish it off nicely. A lot of brands, you see all that steel exposed, and then over time, it gets all rusty and corroded looking, and this like kind of hides some of that stuff. So I do like how they finish that section off. Now on the corner of the coach back there by the uh, battery compartment, there's some stickers back there, guys. And those are important stickers just to kind of know things about the RV. The first one's gonna be your gross vehicle weight sticker. Basically that tells you the most you can load the RV up to. The next part of that sticker also has your production date, your VIN number, and your axle sizes and stuff like that on there. So important sticker. Next is going to be your unloaded weight sticker, which is usually on the door frame of the camper and also the pen box area of the camper. They usually put it in two places. That'll tell you what the camper weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. So that's what you're hauling down the road plus the gear you pack into it. Next is going to be your carrying capacity sticker. And that is also one on the sidewall, which I think is in French. And then you have the English version over on the door frame of the camper. And that just basically tells you how much weight you can pack into there. And next is gonna be your tire sticker. Again, an English version and a French version because they do sell these into Canada often. And basically that tells you your tire size along with your proper tire pressure. Now, please be sure to check your tire pressure, guys. Very, very important. The tires are rated to hold a certain amount of weight at a certain pressure. And if you let that pressure drop too low, it can blow out the tire a lot easier when you're traveling down the highway at 70 miles an hour. That wouldn't be a good thing. All right, guys, I hope that was a enjoyable little tour there for you. And we are gonna run back inside here. I'm gonna close this thing up, show you what this thing looks like closed and see how it functions. All right, guys, we're now back inside the RV here, and I wanted to again take a minute and show you what happens when you close up the slide rooms. So we got to come back here to our Firefly system. And basically, we have to go to the slide section here, bring up our slide button. And what it does, it has basically an extended retract right here. So we are going to start retracting things. Now, what's going to actually happen, because these are hydraulic slides, the hydraulic fluid flows the path of least resistance. So nine times out of 10, that usually means that that bedroom is gonna start moving first. So let's give it a shot here and see what happens. So we're gonna bring this on in. And as predicted, that's what is moving first. So you can let off the button if you need to, to kind of stop and check and see what's kind of going on. So we're gonna stop right there, kind of show you what this looks like. So I can still come in here and kind of get around if I need to. Now obviously you can't get into the dresser, but you still could come in here and sleep. You could get into your closet area if needed. So if you're stopping at a rest area or Walmart parking lot, something like that, you could do so. Now, one thing that I do notice on this model is in order to be able to fully open the door up like this, you would have to prop the door back because it does catch the corner of the bed. So if you left the door closed, you wouldn't be able to open it up and fully get in there. I mean, you can still squeeze in there, but this way, you know, if you're just stopping at a rest area or whatever, propping the door like this allows you to kind of come in and out without trying to fight with the door. Now you have obviously full access to your bathroom. So there's nothing gonna impede coming into the bathroom area at a rest area or a parking lot or something like that. So no worries there. We're gonna come the rest of the way in here. So next, you can see here, we have the kitchen slide moving. Now these, you notice they're going real quick compared to some of the electric slides that I'll show sometimes. But that came right on in. You can kind of see this comes in real close to the island. So you're not really able to get to anything in that section there. But you can still get to your refrigerator area here if you need to. 
So if you're stopping at that uh, grocery store or wherever and you need to you know, load your fridge or if you're just coming in to grab something to drink out of there, stopping at a rest area, again, you can do so. Now the big slide's coming in. I want to swing the camera out here just a hair. Just wanted to kind of show some of you guys that have never seen a slide topper go in and out. That is, again, the slide topper up there. We'll retract that, but that's all it does. It just kind of rolls right up in there. So pretty simple. It goes right in and right out with the RV slide. And while we're looking here, I want to show you this too. You can kind of see down here, that is what's underneath of that carpeted section. When the slide out's out, you can see how it kind of drops down below the floor section there. So that is the kind of stuff that's where the slide drops down that carpet or if somebody does manage to put vinyl on there, um, that's what it's kind of hiding that stuff right there, those mechanisms and things. Um, so that's all it really does, but thought I'd just kind of show you that. But you can come in here, get to everything that you need to. If you really, really had to, you could, you can kind of see here, you can squeeze right on back through here. Now, the dinette table is technically screwed to the floor, but you could unscrew that and come up with maybe a quick disconnect uh, scenario if you wanted to do some sort of latch system there. But you could actually move that table out of the way. It's only held in by a couple of screws. So if you are the customer that needs to be able to fully get around down here kind of thing, if you made some sort of little thing to allow yourself to move that table, you could truly kind of walk right on back up in here, walk right on around and get to what you want to. But with the table screwed into place, it stops you from kind of doing that. Now, when you go to go back out, kind of the same scenario here, guys, all you gotta do, hit the extend button and we're gonna start going back out. Again, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If you're interested in keeping up with more of these videos, I'm gonna spin back around here. I'm probably making you guys dizzy, I apologize. Um, I wanna just kinda show you this going back out a little bit. Again, guys, thanks for checking out the video. Really, really appreciate it. Be sure to contact CouchesRVNation.com, guys, if you're interested in one of these RVs or really any RV that they carry. They will definitely save you guys a ton of money if you're interested, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks again.